Well, I'm just thrilled to join you graduates for this important occasion. Uh, at this commencement at BYU Hawaii, we will award 184 bachelor's degrees and four associate's degrees for a total of 188 degrees. You graduates represent 35 different countries and 23 different states across America. You range from 19 years old to 40 years old. Now, a few years ago, we started a tradition. Before I give my talk, I'd like to do a brief visual demonstration to just illustrate to you and all of us who's graduating today. Just a few things about you. So, will all the graduates who are international students please stand? Okay, thank you very much. You may be seated. Now, will all the graduates who speak two languages, whether native or from your mission, would you please stand? Let's just see that. Great. Okay. Okay, now stay standing if you speak three or more languages. Okay. Does anybody speak four or more languages? <laughs> How about five? All right, do I hear six? <laughs> okay. So that gives you a sense of the cultural, the linguistic diversity of the, of the students. Now, I want all the graduates to stand who are the first person in your family to graduate from college. Would you just please stand if you're the first person in your family to graduate from college? Thank you. You're a particularly important group. I see you as changing the trajectory of the family for many years to come, generations. Thank you. Now, will all the graduates who were employed, who worked while they were going to school, would you please stand if you worked here to try to support yourself? That's very good. Thank you. Now, remain standing if you were, if you participated in BYU Hawaii's iWork program. How many of you are iWork graduates? Okay. Thank you. Great. You may be seated. Well, I hope this gives all of you graduates and all of us here today a, uh, a sense of who's here. Now, I'll just ask one more category. Um, would all of you who are first-generation converts to the church, that is, you were converted with a family that wasn't Latter-day Saint, would you just stand so we can see that group? How about that? Okay, great. Thank you very much. I think, I think you can see from this, you may be seated, that uh, this, you represent a very diverse class and that BYU Hawaii that is a really special and unique place in church education. We're, we're just grateful for you. Now, now, it's my privilege at this point in the program to offer a brief presidential message. And I take this duty very seriously. Um, and I always try to exceed expectations. But, but this really isn't too hard, given the expectations. Uh, one time, President, I believe it was Pre President Faust said that a commencement speaker, being a commencement speaker, is a bit like being the corpse at a funeral. You're necessary for the occasion, but no one expects too much of you. <laughs> so today, I want to talk about a topic, the topic of seeing and believing. We often say that seeing is believing. In the spiritual realm, however, the reverse is also true. Believing is seeing. Believing helps us see things with our spiritual eyes and senses. The world you are entering will likely test your deepest beliefs. So as you leave here, I want to give you one last piece of presidential advice. Be believing in order to see things as they really are. So I call this talk seeing and be believing is seen. Now by saying that believing is seen, I don't mean to deny or disparage the common sense notion that seeing is believing. I believe you are here, you graduates, because I see you in front of me. You would rightly consider me kind of crazy to doubt this. 
Yes, there are optical illusions and other ways that our senses and our reason can be unreliable guides to knowledge, but normally people can safely believe their eyes. Furthermore, in most matters, it's wise to insist on seeing before believing. If a person comes to you peddling a cream to cure your cancer or a scheme to double your money in a week, I hope that you will treat such claims with a large dose of skepticism and say, show me the evidence before you lay down your money or mortgage your home. As a soon-to-be college graduate, you've developed the ability to gather evidence and analyze empirical data and test truth claims through reason and reason your way through issues. Now, in the process, you may have acquired what is sometimes called healthy skepticism when it comes to assessing the claims of pitchmen and politicians. These skills and intellectual habits will serve you well as you leave here. At the same time, I hope that your university education has not turned you into full-blown skeptics. For to paraphrase Hamlet to his college buddy Horatio, he said, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of, dreamt of in our philosophy. Some truths are discovered through rigorous and systematic doubt in philosophy and in science, as Descartes famously demonstrated by trying to doubt everything. But other truths disclose themselves more readily to belief than to doubt. In the spiritual realm, I believe can lead to I understand. I am fond of this little Latin saying that goes, credo ut intelligum. Now let me parse the Latin just for a minute. Credo, or credo, I believe, ut, in order, intelligum, to know. So I believe in order to know. Credo, ut, intelligum. You can drop that on a date now and really impress your date. This saying contains actually an important spiritual truth. In the physical world, seeing comes prior to believing. But in the spiritual world, believing often precedes knowing, just as faith precedes the miracle. Believing can give us eyes to see and ears to hear, enabling us to understand and know. Jesus taught this lesson to his apostle Thomas, whom we often call Doubting Thomas. Thomas insisted that he see the resurrected Christ before he would believe. Except I see his hand in his hands the prince of the nails, I will not believe, said Thomas. While granting Thomas's desire to see, Jesus chided him to be not faithless, but believing, and pronounced a blessing on those who believe before they see. Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed art they that have not seen and yet have believed. The Lord promises that the days will come when you shall see me, Christ, for he will unveil his face to you. Belief coupled with righteousness leads to seeing and knowing of a very high order. Remember the metaphor of the seed in Alma 32? The mere desire to believe initiates a process that leads to knowing. By contrast, unbelief prevents the seed from growing and the person from knowing. In the New Testament, it similarly says in something about a seed that the Lord says that the unbelieving and disobedient, he says and, uh, that they seeing, see not, and hearing, hear not. In the Book of Mormon, we see the same truth. It says in Alma's day that those in the rising generation who chose not to believe the tradition, of their, the tradition of their fathers regarding core doctrines because of their unbelief could not understand the word of God. Their unbelief made it so they couldn't understand. And I've written in the margins of my scriptures 
believe to understand credo ut intelligum. So I encourage you graduates in the rising generation today and all of us to learn how, when, and what to believe in order to understand credo ut intelligum. As you seek to believe the gospel, brothers and sisters, you will discover that paradoxically, believing becomes seeing. Your testimony will open up vistas unavailable to those, to a skeptical world. And this will influence how you see everything else. As C.S. Lewis says, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. And so do I. One of my favorite verses from the Psalms is this, in thy light shall we see light. For me, the gospel is not a set of sacred Sunday truths jostling with secular truths that govern the workaday world. In fact, I actually find little evidence in the scripture for a sharp distinction that we often draw between so-called secular and sacred truth. God speaks of all truth as belonging to a whole. The gospel puts truth, all truth, into proper perspective. It casts a light on, well, everything. It helps us see things as they really are and as they really will be, all things. So, in conclusion, how can believing help you and me see things as they really are? Let me close with just a few quick examples. Belief in creation enables you and me to look at the sun, the moon, the stars, and see God moving in his majesty and power, rather than viewing the universe, as so many do, as meaningless motion of mere matter spinning silently in the void. Belief in the atonement enables us to see glorious possibilities in our family, our neighbors, and ourselves, to catch glimpses of the gods and goddesses that they will someday be beyond the weak, petty, stumbling, backsliding creatures that we sometimes seem to be, and to face the future with bright hope for a redemption. Belief in the restoration enables us to read history and the daily news uh, with a sense of where all this is heading. Despite the horrors in the past and in, and, and in today's harrowing headlines, we can be confident that God is truly working out his designs and that ultimately good will prevail and all will be well and all will be well and every manner of thing will be well. Belief in the resurrection allows us to love that well which we must lose ere long, quote Shakespeare, knowing that that same sweet sociality which exists among us here will exist among us there in eternity, only coupled with eternal glory. And belief in God's providence opens our eyes to discern the little miracles that heaven pours out on us daily. It grants us eyes to see the grace that envelops our lives. So brothers and sisters, and especially you dear graduates, remember as you leave here that believing can lead to seeing no less than seeing leads to believing. May you cultivate believing hearts to match the critical minds with which higher education has properly fitted you. For Truth can be known through both the heart and the mind. Reality can be seen through both spiritual and natural eyes. Therefore, both of these truisms are true and valid in their own way. Seeing is believing, but so too, believing is seeing. May you believe, may you see to believe, and may you believe to see. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our student speaker this morning is Ying Suet Michelle Lung. Michelle is from Hong Kong, 
she enrolled at Brigham Young University, Hawaii, in the winter semester of 2014. Then she left for a mission to the England London Mission. She returned to BYU Hawaii where she met her eternal companion and they got married in the Hong Kong China Temple in 2018. Michelle is, is graduating with a degree in TESOL education and after graduation she will start teaching EIL classes, English as an international language classes, as a special instructor for the English language teaching and learning program here at BYU Hawaii. Michelle, following Michelle's remarks, we will be privileged to hear from Brother R. Kelly Hawes, assistant to the Commissioner of the Church of Jesus Christ, of the, of the Church Educational System, and Secretary to the Board of Trustees. Brother Hawes was born and raised in Midvale, Utah. He served a full-time mission for the church in the Iowa Des Moines mission. He met his wife, Connie, while attending Snow College where he played on the basketball team and served as student body president. Uh, they were sealed in the Salt Lake Temple. Then Brother Hawes began his employment with seminaries and institutes of religion in 1984 and has had assignments in both Utah and Washington, D.C. as a seminary teacher, coordinator, manager of administrative training. He also served as the area director of the Eastern United States and Eastern Canadian provinces. And upon returning to Utah, Brother Hawes served as assistant administrator for seminaries and institutes of religion, supervising areas in the United States, Caribbean, and Africa. In 2017, Brother Hawes was asked to serve as the director of the correlation evaluation for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints until his appointment as assistant to the commissioner and secretary to the Church Board of Education and Board of Trustees. Brother Hawes has received his associate degree from Snow College his bachelor's degree from Brigham Young University and his master, a master's degree from Utah State University. He began his doctoral work at the University of Utah and concluded uh, his work at George Mason University where he received a doctor of arts degree. So he's well-traveled in academia. Brother Haas has served a full-time, excuse me. Uh, so uh, we, will, we will first hear uh, from our student speaker uh, and then from um, Brother Hawes, and after we will have a musical number performed by Rachel Dunmar and Jennifer Durden. The song they will sing and play is You'll Never Walk Alone. It has a special message for all of us, but especially you graduates, graduates as you leave this university. And now Michelle. <laughs> 